Evening class, welcome to our presentation on networking and cloud computing. Before I continue, as usual, some updates. Just be aware that assignment three will be made available from the 8th of August. In fact, it might be made available a day or two before that, but you'll have four weeks to do assignment three. It covers the entire syllabus and it consists of only one question. So you need, we'll be incorporating pretty much all of the syllabus all into one question. Um, and those of you who've been doing the exercises will realize that's pretty much what you've been doing with the exercises. So once again, if you do the exercises, you will uh, be at a, a, an advantage for assignment three. And then one other thing about the assignment, please note that there will not be any extensions for assignment three. There's no grace period and no extensions any, under any circumstances. And that's because there won't be enough time to mark the assignments and get the um, results out before the ex exam. So there's no extensions for assignment three. It has to be submitted um, by the final submission date. Then the next classes, Next one, I'll go through the solutions to assignment two. That'll be next week. Um, I'll send out notices in due course. And then the next one after that will be some revision uh, for assignment three. Uh, that'll be on the 10th of August. And um, we can also have a look at the questions and clarify any aspects that need to be clarified. Other than that, it's on to networking and cloud computing, unless there's any questions or discussion. Okay, let's get into it. <coughs> Excuse me, right, the outcomes. You need to know the difference between and the use of the various networking protocols, including FTP, TCP, and UDP. In fact, you only really need to know about TCP and UDP and be able to code examples with them. Uh, the other protocols we'll have a look at very briefly, but you don't need to know much more than that they exist and a rough idea of what they're for. The only ones you need to know in some detail are TCP and UDP. You must understand and implement the process and tools Qt provides to handle networked applications. Um, I'll, give you some information on some links for that but as usual qt is quite well documented and there are um, some good um, links available on, on general information on networking and also generally about the qt classes that are used for networking um, besides the documentation for the actual classes then you need to be able to describe the basic concepts and infrastructure related to cloud computing and then you need to be able to describe the benefits that can be gained from utilizing cloud computing platforms and tools. Um, to be quite honest, this part on cloud computing is not the most important part of the syllabus by any means. Um, but you must have a look at it, read through it, and do go through that as your fundamentals um, tutorial. Um, you won't get really in-depth questions on this, but you will probably get a a question or two for like two or three marks or something in the exam, but um, nothing really detailed, but it is worth your while to at least read through it and have some idea of what it's about. Right, then looking at some of the protocols, TCP, Transmission Control Protocol. For most of you, this should be revision from uh, previous modules, so we're going to go through this fairly quickly. Um, you should know all of this already. If you've forgotten about it, you need to do some revision. The TCP provides a reliable error check delivery of data between applications on hosts communicating over an IP network. It's one of the main protocols of the internet protocol suite. You'll see the term IP quite often. Uh, TCP is connection orientated. The connection between the client and server must be established before um, data can be transmitted. Um, as we'll see shortly, uh, the exact opposite for UDP, there's no connection. So TCP requires a, a connection to be established between the client and the server before anything further can happen. 
then RP, the so-called internet pro protocol. It's the principal communication protocol of the internet protocol suite. Um, RP packets include a header, this, which includes the source and destination, addresses, etc., and then also the payload, which is the data. It delivers packets from source to destination based on RP addresses in the header. It is also a connectionless protocol. In the what's known as the TCP RP suite, it's a suite of uh, protocols, quite a few, uh, several of them lumped together. The TCP and RP are the two main ones. This um, TCP RP suite provides end-to-end -end data communication over the internet or an intranet, in any kind of internet of network, in other words. It specifies how data is broken into packets, how it's addressed, how it's transmitted, how it's routed, and how it's received. Uh, and TCP RP is delayed into four layers. I'm not going to go into the details. As I said, this should be revision. Uh, there's an application layer, a transport layer, a network layer, and a physical layer. Uh, if you've forgotten this or not familiar with it, please do some revision or look it up. Uh, so you're not going to get detailed questions on it, but it gives you good background to using TCP and UDP, and you should be aware of it. Right. One of the good things about TCP RP is it's non-proprietary. It's not controlled by any company. It's compatible with all operating systems and all types of hardware and networks. So it's a very general um, set of protocols that can be used basically anywhere and it's not controlled by any company or group at all. So that's one of the very good strong points about TCP. It's basically open and available everywhere. Then look at UDP, which is user datagram protocol, which it's used to send messages, which are known as datagrams, to other hosts on an RP network. It's a simple connectionless communication with minimal protocols. And that's the strength of UDP. It's simple, no connection, and minimal protocols. That has some disadvantages as well, but we'll get to that. Then these are various protocols, as I say, you don't need to know them in detail, but just have an idea. You must basically know they exist and have a rough idea what they do. But the ones that you should uh, familiarize yourself with is HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, the file transfer protocol, SMTP, simple mail transfer used for emails, and POP, post office protocol. Um, so you don't need to know these in detail, but just have an idea of what they do and what they're used for. And then IMAP is another one, also Internet Message Access Protocol. Then be familiar with this terminology, connect, connectionless communication. Each data unit is individually addressed and routed based on information carried in each unit, rather than using a prearranged fixed data channel. Messages can be sent without prior arrangement, and the sender does not ensure that intended receiver is available to receive data message. Data may arrive out of sequence or not at all. Uh, so from, from that, you can see it's a simple just fire and forget kind of communication, and it may or may not arrive or in some order with bits of it missing or something. So it's a simple simple form of communication, but it's not very reliable. Then you have a connection orientated communication, which requires a logical connection between the two processes before data is exchanged. And the connection must be maintained during the entire time that communication is taking place and then released afterwards. So connection oriented communication is more formal and there's obviously a bigger overhead to it because it has to maintain the communication and establishing communication that before anything can happen. And just a little side note here, um, OSI, uh, probably most of you have come across that before. If you look in textbooks and academic things that generally refer, refer to OSI, um, the open systems, what's it, interconnectability or something I've actually forgotten. Um, but then we have what's known as TCP IP, 
and very roughly speaking, this is an oversimplification, but TCP IP is roughly a compressed version of OSI. It only has four layers instead of seven. Um, so OSI is a more theoretical um, set of protocols where TCP IP is more practical. And why I'm mentioning this to you is because, because of that, because TCP is more practical, whereas OSI tends to be sort of pie in the sky, academic kind of thing, TPC RP has much greater marketplace acceptance. Um, so, so the thing is, if you read some sources and uh, prescribe books, textbooks and things, you'll see references to OSI, but in the real world, um, TCP RP is actually um, used far more widely uh, than OSI. So just to be clear on what the differences between those two are, uh, OSI is a nice theoretical concept, but in the real world, TCP IP is used far more um, widely. But you may see the terms OSI or TCP IP used almost interchangeably in, in some sources. Okay, and this bit is, uh, pretty important. You need to know the difference between TCP and UDP. Uh, we've already mentioned most of this, but let's go through the detail. Uh, TCP is a connection-oriented protocol, whereas UDP is connectionless. And because of that, TCP is slower than U UDP. It's because it has this uh, bigger overhead, uh, largely for establishing and maintaining connections, whereas UDP because there's no connection required, it's faster means of communication than TCP. Our TCP has error checking built in and guaranteed delivery and guaranteed for that delivery to be in order. Uh, UDP has some basic error checking uh, if you look in some sources, it will tell you that UDP doesn't actually have any form of error checking. Uh, it does, in fact, have a very basic error checking based on checksums, um, but there's no guaranteed delivery. And what it does with its error checking on the check with the checksums, if it finds anything defective, it just discards it. Um, so with UDP you may or may not actually receive the message at all. You may or may not receive all of it, or you may receive it with bits in the middle missing, because as I say, if it finds any errors with its basic error checking, it just throws them away and moves on. Okay, this bit, a little bit repetitive of what we already said, but TCP has a larger overhead and it, um, greater use of available bandwidth, and that's because of its error checking and connection management, and that's why it's also slower. UDP, on the other hand, has a much smaller overhead. It has minimal overhead for error checking, no overhead for opening a connection or maintaining a connection or terminating a connection. So UDP has very, very little overhead, whereas TCP has an appreciable overhead because of all the management uh, of the connection that it's got and error checking that it's got to do. Our TCP, as I already said, any lost packets are retransmitted. So it does full error checking and it makes sure that everything is received and it makes sure that everything is received in the correct order. Uh, UTP, the data is sent whether or not it is received and there's no retransmission. So as I said, UDP is just fire and forget. It just transmits regardless. And it doesn't know or care if anybody's listening or anybody's received anything or how much they've received or anything. It just carries on transmitting regardless. Then T TCP, because it's a connection-based protocol, it's point-to-point -point only, uh, whereas UDP is more versatile. And this is one of its main strong points. It can be either point-to-point -point or broadcast. So UDP can uh, basically be used with one sender and many listeners. Then TCP is used by various um, other protocols and it's used when reliable communication is required. Uh, you'll notice your email uh, protocols are there, uh, your internet protocols and also file transfer.